long and narrow country, only 73 miles uh, wide, 2,653 miles long. But today we will only look at the center and the north of Chile, starting in the capital, Santiago de Chile. And nearly all tourists and cactus enthusiasts uh, follow the highway number five. And we will do this part as well. The white stars on the map uh, mark the spots where we will look at the well-known cactus sites. And from each of these points, we will make excursions of the beaten track, as is the title. So coming from Europe, shortly before arriving at Santiago's airport, we get a spectacular view of the snow-covered peaks of the Andes Mountains. It is really great to see that, if there is enough snow. And our starting point is Chile's capital, Santiago de Chile. Santiago is a very busy city um, where old historical buildings like the Presidential Palace and the Cathedral stand next to modern skyscrapers and the four pictures represent some of the touristic highlights. But the most attractive uh, site for, for us is always the old market hall. Um, its metal construction was prefabricated in England. And um, in more than 70 restaurants inside this hall, you can taste the fresh seafood. And if ever you come here, you should go there and just taste it. But as cactus enthusiasts, we want to see cacti, of course, and therefore we leave the city and follow the way to Pareones, which is situated in the Andes, only a few kilometers above the city. Um, large Trichus cereus um, chiluensis in bloom are the first cacti that we see um, already from the car, in fact. Um, you see they have beautiful large flowers. In the last year, the road has been paved, which makes it quite easy to climb the more than 30 narrow curves to Santiago ski resort Farellones. Um, we get a spectacular view from the Andes, again, this time not from above, but from the ground. Um, we are not the only ones here. Come this keep a watchful eye on us while we are looking for cacti, of course. There are plenty of areas I see Corvispina, and they are quite nicely arranged here in the rocks, just like a rock garden. Um, to see the flowers, uh, you have to come in late spring. But to be honest, we came here for a much less attractive cactus. Austrocactus spiniflorus. This is one of the very few places where it grows. It's a rare plant and very difficult to spot when not flowering. It is really a highly endangered cactus. And it's a strange plant with a rather simple flower and the fruits take a long time to ripen. In the flowering year, they look almost identical as the stems and only in the following year they turn yellow. And this is when the seeds are ripe. And in the corner uh, below you see, they are sometimes covered with snow most, most of the winter. And if you are there, never forget to throw a glance at the rest of the vegetation. This is really worthwhile. These are all in violet, but there are also beauties as the uh, Alstremeria. This is a genus which is represented in Chile with many species. This one is Alstremeria exerens. We will see other Alstremerias later. 
this Rodo Fiala, well, this is my favorite Rodo, Rodo Fiala, is um, Rodo Irion. And um, the flowers can be white with a nice purple pattern, or they can also be pink throughout. Uh, this genus belongs uh, to the Amarillidaceae family. And there are even more beauties if you come in late spring and early summer. I put the name in the picture so that you can see which plants they are. But now let's leave the metropolitan area and move on to the Pacific coast to a place called Pichidangi. This is not South Africa, even though there is this beautiful aloe in the, in the foreground. Um, this is the Bay of Pichidangi, and this site right at the ocean is a well-known place for, for a special cactus. Um, at first, we see the very spiny stems of uh, Eulichnia castanea, and um, well, there's even a flower. Flowers of the Eulichnias are very beautiful, large flowers. And a little higher up on the rocks, we can spot some clusters of cacti that are far more difficult to reach for us. But somehow we managed to get closer and um, we have a much better sight of this subspecies of Ariosaisi subtibosa. Uh, all plants here look very healthy and they showed us their nice golden spines. These plants are not so very old. The only flower that we could find was on an already old and dark specimen. And um, well, it's a pity the flower was already half eaten by the ants, but we were happy to find some ripe fruits. This is always a pleasure. Um, well, to be honest, the flowers of the Achtremerias were far more attractive. So this is our second Achtremeria now. And it's always exciting to find flowering orchids. This is um, Chlorea chrysantha. Now we leave the beaten track and visit a really magic place. A very good friend from Santiago had arranged uh, an excursion to a hill called Cerro Santa Ines which is very close to Pichidangi. Uh, from this hill, you can see Pichidangi um, down at the coast. And um, please now follow me on a short walk into this virgin forest in the middle of a desert-like region. It's incredible. The whole forest is formed by only one species of trees. It's Extoxicon punctatum, um, and they call it olivillo here in, in Chile. Have you seen it? Wasn't there just an elf or a goblin? After a few steps, we have completely forgotten the surrounding desert, and we are in this magical forest. Would you have expected such nice green ferns here? In fact, we didn't. And the shade of the trees allows some shrubs, like this rare Mycoidinia rufa, to grow here. Um, at a clearing, we were surprised to see a flowering passiflora. very pretty plant. But as soon as we leave the shade of the trees, the charm is already broken. 
Bas Pichidang ni below us again. But we get some consolation. We get some beautiful flowering areas. I see Covispina. This is a form with very robust spines. We move on. We continue our trip to, towards um, the north, following the coastline to La Serena. This is one of Chile's largest cities. And this is the highway number five. The coastal mountains get their water from the mist that comes in from the sea in the morning. This mist is called Kamanchaka. And later in the day, the misty sky clears up and we can see the large Ulichnias in nice sunlight. The predominant uh, species is Ulichnia acida, with very long spines and pretty flowers. Again, these big flowers full of pollen. And when we come here, there are the first Copiapoas that we come across. They got their name after the city of Coquimbo. Coquimbo is La Serena's neighboring town. And the Copiapoa is named Coquimbana. It's always nice to see them in flower, though the flowers of Copiapoas are never spectacular. The Alki Valley is famous in Chile. It, it is right east of La Serena, and it's a place of desire for all the Chileans, but also for cactus enthusiasts. Oh, the valley is well known for the vineyards, where they grow wine for producing pisco, the famous drink, and then they seem to appreciate cacti more and more by now. All the fresh green uh, in the lower valley um, needs really a lot of water. And this one is one of the big reservoirs um, that supplies the water. Um, cacti only survive in places that are not yet used for plantations. I promised you to leave the beaten track and therefore we leave the Alpi Valley and follow a canyon that branches off from the Alpi Valley. Um, we wanted to look out for a special cactus there. It was not this one. At the beginning, we only see heavily spined Trichocereus, um, often covered with patches of Tristrix afula, which is a parasite rather nice flowers. And the valley, the Marquesa Valley, seems to be also a good place for Ereosaisi. This is Ereosaisi clavata. Um, unfortunately, all the specimens next to the road are covered with dust. Um, there were no flowers, but some ripe fruits again. But this is the plant that we came here for. This is Myoinopsis grandiflora. And we were happy to find such a large, wide spined cluster. And the type locality of the species is in another valley. And this valley also branches off, but higher up the Alpi Valley. It's called Llanos de Wanta, and it is a private property, but the owner, it was really friendly, and he let the gate open for us, so we could enter and we could return, but it was an extremely difficult climb up the steep and slippery slope. 
but following the animal tracks, we finally managed to get up without causing a landslide. We were fear that we, we were afraid that we would cause a landslide of our own car, but this didn't happen. And we found a few specimens of Myeliopsis grandiflora, which were all in good shape, but it was a pity that there were no flowers. The beautiful spines have compensated us a bit. We suppose that most of you would rather come here for such a beautiful Ariosaisi, Ariosaisoides, than for a Myoenopsis. So looking for Myoenopsis is something very special, I, I believe. Or perhaps you come here for such a nice Maleservia. Our last remote place of the Alki Valley is the spectacular valley of the Rio del Toro. Um, again, we needed a permission, and this time we had to pay for it. Um, but the investment was worthwhile. Lower in the valley, we found a Myoenopsis. This is still unknown to us. We have no name for it. And we wanted to see if there were others higher up. We were allowed to follow the road in direction to Las Idiondas, and we felt no cactus, found no cactus, but we felt overwhelmed by the colorful mountain scenery that we found up here. This was really great. We didn't meet any people. There was only a lonesome Guanaco waiting for us in the middle of the road. And it wasn't shy at all, so it kept, it stayed there. And we could step out of the car and it, what a gorgeous place to stop the car. And who needs a cactus in such a grand setting? Especially if there are so pretty other plants all, all around. Many, many high mountain plants here, all tiny and very nice. We leave the region of La Serena, going further north, and make our next stop in the area of Huasco and Mayenar. So this is Huasco, the bay, and Huasco is a nice little port town with a good infrastructure for a stay and a good starting point to search for cacti near the coast. The other city, Vallenar, is situated further east in the same valley and it offers everything you need if you want to go for cacti more inland. North and south of Huasco, we can find a form of Copiapua, Coquimbana, the form Hitleriana. It's characterized by a small hump below the aerial. I tried to show it to you. It's here on the picture, you can see it. It's always below the aerial. And Ariosaisi napina, subspecies Lemke, also grows near the coast in the same surroundings as the Copiapoa. However, it is much more difficult to find, especially when it is not in flower. So this one was quite easy. We leave again the usual track and we visit the region south of Prairina which is more or less halfway between Huasco and Ballena. And note the large red patches all on the ground. 
um, that surround the clusters of Yulechnia and Copiapoa. These red patches turn out to be the worldwide spread Mesembryanthemum cristallinum. So not really a rare plant, but it looks quite nice here. And we continue south and come along some beautiful clusters of Copiapoa alticostata. Mm. We suppose there must have been some rain before because we find some small annual plants uh, flowering all over the place. So these light pink patches all about. And there are also some flowers on the Copiapoas. And they used to flower you um, after rainfall. I'm going still further and a bit higher. We finally reach the spot where we found Copiapua Griseo Violacea. And that is what we came to search for. And with its dark purple frosted epidermis and the curved black spines, this is probably one of the most beautiful finds of the last years, I suppose. And I find the flowers also quite attractive. And for the next rather new Copiapua, we have to follow the serpentine road here. Um, this is the road of Cuesta la Totora. At first we find some nicely spined Aerocyce atroviridis, um, dark form and also light green form, but it's both the same species. No flowers. And later on this same way and a bit higher, we see very healthy flowering Copiapua coralensis. Like uh, Griseo violacea, this species has a purplish and somewhat frosted epidermis. They are both two really beautiful Copiapuas. In new growth, the spines are black and later they seem to turn yellowish. Um, it's always good to keep one's eyes open also for other nice plants in the neighborhood before we move on to our next place. Our next visit is an unusual place. It brings us as to um, El Transito in the mountains east of Vallenar. And just take a short look at the cemetery Stop your car, cross the road, and then climb up the hill on the other side of the cemetery. There you can find the most beautifully spined Aerosyce, Aerosyceoides. And this one has plenty of fruits on it. And if you come earlier in the season, you may also see flowers. But when you climb up, be careful. Cumulo Puncialoicofea is lurking around everywhere and it's waiting to jump onto your ankles. On another slope, fantastic Eriosyce Arata are waiting for us. They were even on flowers and one. And again, don't forget to throw a glance at the neighboring beauties. They are always worth a look. Well, we didn't find the Mayuenopsis at El Tandito that we were looking for. And so we went a bit higher up the road, stopped our car at 
Konai, right to this, next to this hill. And this turned out to be a good decision. There they were. Nice little clusters of Myweniopsis ahi conoidea. This is one of the rare species in the genus and it's quite looked after. It's a miniature plant and thus it is not so easy to spot, especially in, in a very dry season. And we change our direction a little towards south now and follow a small road along the Rio del Carmen, looking out for another Myweniopsis. And this time uh, we had to climb a steep hill before we saw the first Myweniopsis. Well, fortunately, these are quite a good size, so not so difficult to see. And there are even flowers, and no doubt, this is Myweniopsis wagenknechti. The deep purple stigmas in the flowers, um, the deep purple stigma is quite characteristic for this uh, species. The vegetation around was also worth a closer look. Now, time to continue our trip. We are back near the coast again, and we go to Copiapu and Caldera, and more Copiapuas are waiting for us. But first, we take a little time for a walk along the coast near Caldera, and we look at the big granite rocks that form these are sculptures, and there is also Oxalis gigantea. The plant itself doesn't really look nice, but the flowers do. And we are just in time for Copiapua calderana. After some rainfall, the plants were at their very best and in full flower. A bit south of Caldera, further inland, on a dry and stony hill, we were lucky to find the form Borealis of Copiapua megaritza, which was also in flower. Here, a look into the flower. And Eriozyce krausi is a plant that grows only in flat areas with degraded granite. It's nearly impossible to spot these plants without the flowers, so these were rather easy to find. And this is an annual species of Maliserbia, which can only be seen in El Nino years after there had been some rain. Now we go into a small quebrada, a small valley. Quebrada Leon is not really far off the beaten track, but not so well known. So we have to stop the car at the entrance of the valley and walk in, into the valley. And quite close to the entrance, there's a nice population of Trichocereus desepicola, the variety Fulvilanatus. And as well, the beautiful Eulichinia breviflora with its fruit wrapped in soft golden hairs and large white flowers again. This, I, I can never decide whether the fruits are more beautiful or the flowers. And we cross the rocky parts. And right after that, we find rather large copiapuas. And these are copiapua marginata, with very strong spines, also in flower. And 
various areocytes with Talta lenses, the subspecies Pygmaea, which seems to love the rock crevices because we found it only in these rocks. And the same Copiapua leonensis. This is what we had come here for. We wanted to see this Copiapua. Uh, the species seems to be endemic to the Quebrada leon. And all plants were very small. This specimen was one of the biggest that we found. And then there is um, a shrub that grows in the greener parts of the Quebrada. This is Euphorbia lactiflua. Now we are going to let the highway far behind and head towards the Andes through a very colorful scenery on a bad road. We wanted to find another Mayuenopsis, Mayuenopsis leoncito. And there it was on the roadside. Obviously, Mayuenopsis have a liking for spectacular places. These show themselves at their very best in full bloom. And this species has exceptionally large flowers. I think some of the most beautiful among my Uniopsis. And this species is very rare in collections. When they are not in bloom, you can just enjoy the spines. According to the information on a herbarium sheet, the same species also should grow in this remote valley southeast of Copiapo. Uh, no plants on the roadside. That means we have to climb again. We were welcomed by pretty Cruxanxia, which were in white, and also with pink black teeth. And some lizards seem to like the place very much. It's very colorful. And we had expected to find similar plants like before, but there were no big clusters with yellow large flowers here. All my Uniopsis here were tiny, and we doubt very much if this is Leoncito. They seem to be my Uniopsis ashikonoidea. But there are very pretty other plants here as well. Hitantera lanata is one of the most lovely high altitude flowers. It's always a pleasure to see this plant. Now, someone seems to have taken the expression off the track a bit too literally. We will try to continue more carefully now. We go into the Quebrada San Andres, which is east of Copiapu, and it is the home of another Mayweniopsis. We pass the Vega San Andres along the green meadow, and the wild donkeys and mules. These are animals that are wild now, but they are left behind by miners. The, um, the water is poisoned with arsenic and, well, a short time later we find uh, the Mayuenopsis that we were looking for. Big red clusters of Mayuenopsis colorea in the rocks. The name refers to, uh, to the red color of the spines. We even found a late flower. Here's a close-up. In the flat areas where the rock is degraded, there, there we found Cistante uh, celosioides and some other beautiful plants. 
it's always surprising to see such delicate plants in such rough surroundings. The higher we get, the more sparse the vegetation becomes, and there's only now grass left. We are approaching the high Andes, now with altitudes above 11,500 feet. Quite breathtaking here. Not for the vicuñas, it's their habitat. Um, oops. They feed on this yellow stipar grass. Very, very beautiful animals, and they weren't so very shy here. And we, we come a bit higher, and there is this spectacular cascade of the Rio Lomas, and it seems completely surreal in this desert. Who would expect a waterfall here? And even in summer, the snow does not melt at this altitude. It evaporates, and thus, uh, it forms these bizarre peaks of ice, which are called penitentes. Um, shortly before we come to the Argentinian border, we reach the absolutely stunning Laguna Verde, the green lagoon. We should no longer stay at altitude. This is too breathtaking and we better go down to the sea level again. Let's visit Pan de Azúcar. This national park is especially popular with cactus enthusiasts. The place is famous for the countless copiapoas. Namely, copiapoa columna alba. Yet there are more species of Copiapoa to see here. Like Copiapoa cinerascens, which forms compact clumps. And the big Copiapoa serpenti sulcata with the flattened apex. Quite typical. And all the plants in Pan de Azuka Park depend on the mist. Here you can see how it slowly crawls into the area of Las Lomitas, which is a part of the park. And the Ulichnia sampiana that grows here has dense aerial wool and long spines to collect the water. The following detail shows a fruit covered completely with soft wool. And on the right, picture you can see some drops of water that remain from the mist. Yes, Copia Poa Laui. This is probably the most sought after species from here. The tiny heads are perfectly camouflaged in the soil. You have to pay good attention to find them. Now let's leave the beaten track once more and make a trip to the Andes. We start in Chanyaral to find more Myhoeniopsis. There's a strange toad sitting on the roadside, but no cactus yet. On a very black slope, we make out a large cluster, but can we reach it? looks very difficult. We take the risk and succeed. From the close, we can admire the wonderful spines. However, we have no idea which species this is. Perhaps we can find more in the higher areas and follow the lonesome road through the Cordillera Claudio Gai. When we reach the pass, a rocky outcrop catches our eye and we decide to go and look. It was a breathtaking walk, but it was worth it. 
There are several large clusters of an unknown myrhinopsis up there. And some of the clumps are really huge and the spines looked somehow like fur. And the flowers were all well protected between the spines. And again, we are very pleased about our stock because we find plenty of these charming Chitantera lanata again. So pretty flowers. And there's also an Alstromeria, Alstromeria andina. This one is a dream in violet. And there are more high mountain jewel plants. Also a viola again. Only very few miles further, we come to the magnificent salt lake Salar de Pedernales. At more than 11,000 feet. Time to take a good breath again and go back to the coast. From the high mountains, we go to visit Tal Tal, another point of attraction for cactus people. This was Tal Tal's central place in 2006, the church. And this is how it looks now after the old church was has burned down and was rebuilt. These two locations here, our favorite restaurant, our favorite hotel. These two locations have already seen many, many cactus people, I think. If you have some time and don't want to look for cacti, take a walk on Tal Tal's beach with the fisher boats. And when you look at your feet, perhaps you see these beautiful jellyfish, the South American compass jellyfish. However, the most popular excursion from Tal Tal is a visit of the Quebrada San Ramon. It's a mecca for Copiapoa enthusiasts. And well, the entrance is here. The most public, um, sorry. After having left the scrapyard behind, we start quite a long walk into the narrow valley. And there are beautiful Copiapoa, Cineria albispina with frosted white epidermis. Real beauties. And Copiapua tenebrosa, the mountain form of Copiapua hazeltoniana, grows on the rocky cliffs above the way through the quebrada. Not quite so imposing, and a little harder to see is Eriozyce balsicostata. Some of the plants. We're even in flower. And our long walk ends in a small side valley where we reach the population of the magnificent Copiapoa Kainciana. So some years ago, we had the idea to make an effort and find another entrance to the same Terada after an intense study of Google Earth, we found a way to enter from the back, that is from above, and we had to drive several miles off-road before we came to our starting point. Dense fog was crawling in from the coast when we started our walk, but it cleared up quite soon and we saw the very big cacti on the steep cliffs. We managed to get closer and these huge plants turned out to be Ariosaisi rodentiophila. After some time of walking, we saw the first Copiapua bupestris. They were in very good shape as well, and much nicer than the plants that we had seen in lower parts. 
And obviously, this part of the quebrada gets enough mist, providing, providing good conditions for many beautiful plants. Even the beautiful viola calcalensis. And there is enough water for a little brook. And the animals take advantage of it. And to our really big surprise, tens of tiny toads hopped all over the place and the water was teeming with tadpoles. So we wouldn't have believed to find that in the, in the desert. Now let's go to our final spot, that's San Pedro de Atacama. It's a favorite destination of nearly all Chile tourists. A visit of the Sala de Atacama is a must if you want to see the elegant flamingos. And of course, no one should miss the sunset in the moon valley. Another touristic highlight of Chile of a Chile trip is a visit to the geysers of El Tachio. The tourist tours start at four in the morning to reach the geysers before sunrise. The sight of the steaming springs is overwhelming, but the place is really crowded. Thus, we decided to go up when the tourists have left the place. The springs and fountains are a little less impressive than I admit that, but when you have the geysers all for yourself, this is amazing. This way you can enjoy the charm of this magical place much better. Here they are, the magical fountain of geysers. We leave the beaten track once more and head south of San Pedro. At the right time, you can experience a dream in blue for violet. The hills were covered with thousands and thousands of lupins and solanums. But our aim was to look out for a myroniopsis again, and we found small clusters that resembled myroniopsis conoidea next to a lupin. And the flowers seem to confirm this. Looks like conoidea flower. Our search for myroniopsis brought us to another wonderful spot, to the Laguna Miscanti at the foot of the Volcano Miscanti, and to its sister lake, the Laguna Miñiques with the Volcano Miñiques. It was not so easy to find the myroniopsis here. They were quite small and we can't define the species. So it was just species. We hope to find myroniopsis atacamensis near the Pingo Pingo mountains. And so we tried to get there. And strange mountains were lining the road. And we had the impression that one of them looked at us. We had to leave the paved road and continue on a dirt road um, through the desert. Yeah, what a surprise to see a fountain next to the road. Uh, this turned out to be no fountain, but just a broken water pipe of a huge lithium mine that is not far away. A little later, we stopped when we saw some Myroniopsis clusters and some other clusters not far away from the Pingo Pingo Mountains. These were the other flowers. Very nice little desert flowers everywhere about. And this was the Myroniopsis, but it was not Atacamensis as we had hoped. Um, it was proposed, I always, we suppose it's um, a southern form 
the Myrinopsis gamachoi. But a quite beautiful one. We will have to come back to this wonderful country and continue our search. So we end our virtual journey here today. Maybe we showed you some new aspects of Chile and if some of you travel to Chile, this may change your angle on your next trip. Thank you very much for attending.